Trains are an iconic part of the Christmas season and have been that way for decades. The miniature railroad and village is no exception. Housed on the second floor of the Carnegie Science Center, the 80-foot long display is a beautifully handcrafted tribute to Pittsburgh's history. Charles Bodish, a disabled World War I veteran, spent much of his time after the war creating the miniature railroad and village in his home. He modeled it after Western Pennsylvania during the turn of the 20th century. He was a very creative person. And so for his brother's Christmas Eve wedding, he put up this holiday display in his home. One of the visitors asked if he could bring a few people by to see it. And 600 people came the first time the Miniature Railroad was publicly displayed. And then it just grew from there. Eventually, the display outgrew his home and moved to the Buell Planetarium, where people would line the block just to see it. The railroad now resides in the Carnegie Science Center, where it went from a Christmas-only display to a year-round attraction. Patty Rogers, the museum's curator, takes special care to keep the railroad's originality while adding new models to unveil each year. We have a lot of fun things in mind for upcoming years, things that will draw attention to the, the fabulous, the great history of Pittsburgh and Western Pennsylvania, pieces that folks we know will connect with, like Forbes Field or Isley's, and pieces that will just be challenging and a whole lot of fun uh, artistically to create. But what really makes the display so remarkable is the historical sentiment it brings to all who visit. The exhibit is purposely displayed at a lower level to give children the best possible view. The children who visit are able to see unique details that adults might miss. The holiday season brings an enchanting atmosphere to the miniature railroad and village as people come from all over the country to take in its magnificent and unique characteristics. Everyone connects with this display in their own unique way, pers very personally. It's hard to talk to someone that didn't grow up with a train history. Either they knew someone that worked for the railroad or their grandfather worked for the railroad or there was a train that passed by their house. We hear so many fabulous stories. There's, there's so many different levels of appreciation, I think, and connection.